What's going on, guys? It's Brian and Jack with Superman's Comics, and we've reached Last Call. That's right. It is time for Last Call. This is that show where we are talking about our picks for comic books that are hitting Final Order Cutoff this coming Monday night. Not so if you're DC. We always got to say that disclaimer. But either way, this is the show that we like. This is the show that saves people money with those pre-orders, right, Jack? Yeah, one of the most uh, important shows, maybe the most important show that we do, um, helps the comic uh, shops as well as creators, uh, publishers, and most importantly, you, our audience, the comic collector, uh, whether you're saving money for, you know, your investment purposes or, you know, all of us, you're just trying to collect and spend as little as you can while doing it. pre-ordering before foc is key foc meaning of course final order cut off the last moment that you can be guaranteed to lock in those pre-orders and be sure to get your book from diamond minus those allocation situations that do pop up sometimes right so this cut off is for comics that are hitting towards the end of the year we all know towards the end of the year the comic releases kind of slow down a little bit so this is a little bit slower week for final order cut off but we're gonna get right into it, starting with that first one is from Marvel, and we get that return. We get Ghost Rider Return of Vengeance number one. Yeah, so this this is a uh, uh, kind of we've seen over the last several years uh, several Ghost Rider series get uh, kind of brought into um, the marketplace, as well as some that were supposed to come out that never did come out, and things like that. Um, and we've had a lot of different people take the mantle of Ghost Rider, and this is going to be kind of like a second. A, attempt at a a character that is maybe one of the least known um of the kind of people who embody the ghost rider um so this series will mark the return of michael badalino into again the comic book marketplace this is one of the most again kind of like ignored or forgotten about ghost riders it'll be interesting to see where the readers jump on board several of these kind of ghost rider series you know we yeah, it's cool that we've gotten kind of a a various depiction of this character, but at the same point, they've all been kind of stop-start, so we get kind of, like, excited, and and maybe they'll build some momentum for Ghost Rider, and then all of a sudden, we're kind of, like, switching things, and I wonder if there isn't some fatigue in the marketplace for this, so part of me says, man, this is, like, some, like, 90s nostalgia where people are going to get excited uh, for, for the return of the character, and then part of me kind of feels like, People have been kind of overwhelmed with new Ghost Rider series and all the talk about Ghost Rider TV show and that not really coming to fruition. Um, So it'll be interesting. But there's one thing that breaks through everything, and that's reader buzz. If the series can garner reader buzz, um, then people will be on board. Yeah, I I mean, this character to me is similar to Moon Knight, right? It might not have the the grand public praise, but it's got its cult following. Anytime there's Ghost Rider, people are out there picking it up. And it's important to let you guys know that there's a number one coming out. Here we are sticking with Marvel yet again, and we get that amazing Spider-Man number 55. We don't talk too much about Spider-Man on here. We've had a couple of issues within the past few mm-hmm. months, but this is that end of that Kendrick arc, I believe, right? Yeah, the you know Last Remains has been kind of a uh, much hyped storyline. Um, I would love to know, this is one of the things, I'd love to know from the, the community, com- let us know in the comment section, how have you felt about this last remains run? Because I know that um, there were a lot of people that had hopes that it would kind of bring back a resurgence to the Spider-Man series. I think that there was some excitement, but it, like a lot of things in comics, once you get that kind of reveal, does it keep the story going? But the interesting thing about the solicitation for this is they said that if you think that the buildup to Kindred was intense, the fallout from Kindred is going to be even more devastating. So it leads you to believe that everything you've seen, all of that buildup, all of that hype, we're kind of just getting started. So there will be a lot of attention on uh, Amazing Spider-Man 55. And we're all hopeful for Amazing Spider-Man to kind of return to prominence. We've said this before. It's kind of one of those flagship titles in the comic book community, like Batman. Uh, you know, it's, it's, it's the comic industry as a whole is doing better when there's a good Amazing Spider-Man in shows. Yeah, it's interesting that just like you said, the solicit's great, but it's not like you're ever going to read a solicit that goes, ah, pretty ho hum, more of the same. Hope you guys buy this. <laughs> and that is true. And that's a good lesson there because a lot of times when you're reading solicits, you can get overly excited by solicit. You always have to temper yourself and remember that you're listening to that salesman pitch. Right. 
and I'm talking about it a lot of times. Most of the time you see Spider-Man take off, it's usually because of some variant cover with the variant artist. I will let you know that there's a regular price cover here for one of the people that love and can draw Spider-Man great, and that's that Gabriel Delato. Absolutely. Here we are moving over to DC. Remember, we said DC's final cutoff is a little bit earlier, so make sure you pay attention to that. But we get that Dark Knight's Death Metal number seven. This is the final issue to this this mini. This is the final issue to this mini series, correct? It's not just the final issue to this mini series. It may be more final than that, which is why this may be a big issue, kind of in the long run. And I don't necessarily mean big in the sense of the dollars and cents collector value. I mean the fact that. This kind of ties up all this Dark Knights stuff that we have been seeing from the team of Scott Snyder and Greg Capullo. This is kind of the end of their story. Now, that doesn't mean these characters won't be used. I fully expect DC Comics to cash in on some very marketable characters. We've seen through two runs of of this kind of universe and story, um, a a storyline that was marketable both within the series itself and within any tie-ins crossovers variant covers and so on and so forth so where there's money dc is going to continue that no matter what you kind of hear people wanting to say about dc comics but regardless of that that we've talked about this on other programming scott snyder is looking to make a move to doing uh, mostly all kind of creator-owned properties other than his american vampire book that he does at dc comics which is still kind of a creator-owned property um, and he's bringing his, his own publishing house to Image Comics. Um, and, uh, you know, I think that that's going to be a move that's interesting to see the effects because he has been really a staple of, of DC Comics and you've always known what to expect. And from, from the moment he jumped on that Batman run in through the new 52 and, and then Justice League and Rebirth and everything else, um, he has been really crucial to everything at DC Comics. So this is a big issue. Um, certainly, whether we get major conclusions or, or spoilers or teases of the future, um, we'll have to wait and see. But highly, highly anticipated issue. Yeah, and there's also some other books that are hitting FOC from DC this week that if you are a fan of that Dark Knights multiverse, mm -hmm. there's a couple one-shots out there for that as well to pay attention to. Now, sticking with DC, this is probably my favorite pick for this week's FOC, and that's that Jenny Hex number one. It's a one-shot. Now, it's not the first appearance, but it is the first self-titled series, although it's a one-shot. And there's also, for those people that have been collecting those design variants, there is a 1 in 25 design variant for this. Well, yeah, it, it's kind of relevant, though, for that last reason at the very least that you mentioned. Because if you think about Jenny Hicks, Jenny Hicks first appeared in one of those Walmart kind of like super spectaculars um, within that. I think it was like the Batman one. I think it was the issue four. Um, it's when we on the top 10 i think they put the wrong cover up for it <laughs> yeah yeah um but you know it i was, do that from time to time but you, you know, know right yeah every, everybody catches it so you know we that's a good thing we always got a community of backup but uh that's it that's the thing is like that issue uh certainly we've seen even some recent secondary market spikes i think as people anticipate this um but after that her appearances came in young justice um, and while she was a, a centerpiece of some great cover B variants, no incentives, you know, nothing that was really like in high demand uh, from the secondary market. Plus, she was usually featured within a team shot. So I think that this one in 25 long term could be a solid book. Aside from that, you mentioned it's a one shot and it is. Um, but it's important to, to note that this is how publishers decide whether or not, you know, there is meat on the bone with this character for them to develop a, an ongoing series. So it'll be interesting it's to the see. the new DC showcase or Marvel premiere. Right, right. You drop that one shot and you see what happens. Uh, and, uh, you know, we just saw the punchline special, which I think was very much the same sort of a test case. Um, and, and I think with the excitement over that issue, I certainly expect to see more punchline going forward. Um, and certainly, if you haven't gotten a chance, check out that Ross Ritchie YouTube channel. He's got some great micro content on there, including uh, James Tynan telling the story about the creation of punchline. And if you're not excited for punchline already, you will get so in, in watching that. But, you know, I think 
it, largely with the, with Jenny Hex, they, I think DC sees the same kind of success and the same kind of money. Um, and that was the point that Tynan was trying to make is that they've learned that it, this current young generation of comic book collector, they want their own characters. They don't want to collect the characters uh, of their of their parents, of their fathers, of their grandfathers. They're looking for their own uh, characters. And that's why these kind of like new generation of characters that we're seeing pop up are getting so popular so fast. And the old guard sits there and thinks, man, these 2020 comic book collectors are ridiculous, but it, it's one age old thing. So it, it, it's just something that's happening within comic books right now where we're seeing that kind of, you know, differential between generations of collectors. Yeah. And it's important to know, like we always say, this is one that may or may not get hot when it gets closer to release, but you yeah. can get it now, guarantee your copy, get it in through pre FOC. And by doing so it's a four ninety nine dollars cover price book. You get to save that discount. One of those places you can save that discount is through Black Cape Comics, blackcapecomics.com. They offer that pre-order discount for all the books we're talking about for FOC, but they are also the ones that sponsor this video for that indie showcase. We always talk about how Black Cape loves indie comics, just like us. So this is the indie showcase presented by Black Cape Comics. And the first one we want to talk about is a Blade Runner 2029 number one. And this is one we'll bring to attention to all those peach collectors, right? Oh, absolutely. Because we've been talking about this. The clock on Peach Momoko is ticking. She's going full exclusive to Marvel for, you know, a number of years for the foreseeable future within with a long term deal with Marvel. So what that's going to do is it's making a lot of these covers that we're seeing pop up the last covers we're going to see uh, from a given publisher. So we're getting a cover A here as well as an incentive version of that cover A. Um, and you know, it, it's one of those things where whether in the short term it picks up popularity or whether it's one that maybe takes some time to pick up popularity. I'm kind of bullish on these uh, current peach books, especially peach books that are lower printed. Um, I really think that she is starting to hit her stride as the younger current generation's favorite comic book artist. And with that, you're going to start seeing people collect her work the same way that they've collected Gabrielle Delato or Alex Ross or Todd McFarlane. Um, and with that comes these lower print run books, having a good chance over, uh, you know, the length of time to, to start seeing escalation in price. Right. And there are some other Peach Momoko bands from Vendy Publishers this, this week as well. I know Dynamite has a few. So if you want to make sure you check those out, if you're a fan of Peach and trying to collect those covers, but the other one we want to talk about in the Indie Showcase is over to Boom, and this is a licensed property. It's got that Amazon Prime show, but we get a start of a number one for a four-issue miniseries for Expanse. Yeah, so this is a, a, a licensed property. One of the great things about Boom Studios, um, very similar to the approach taken by, by IDW, where, yes, they do uh, you know create their own, but they're also very heavily into um, licensed properties. So they, here we have the Expanse you mentioned, to the Amazon Prime television show. Um, this one fills a smaller niche if, if you're not. Yeah, it's like it um, takes place what in between, I forget what, what seasons, I think it's like three and four. Right, so if you're not an Expanse viewer, this is probably, this is one of those books like you're not gonna be interested in. Um, so it, it, it kind of is gonna fit within a small niche. What's interesting about books like this is, um, once people do get on shows, and we've talked about this with the, the streaming services, that they have kind of extended life beyond what a typical television show would have had back when we were just talking about cable television. Um, it'll be interesting to see if people get on this show late, you know, start to pick up in popularity. Um, but it's already one of those shows that was already commanding like heavy attention in the San Diego Comic-Con and things like that. So that's, it, it, it's, it's an, I like to see uh, Boom Studios and any publisher going after properties like this. Uh, they certainly had the success with Firefly. And with this being a show that's kind of like similar, I, I, I'm not surprised to see um, this kind of with Boom Studios, it sort of fits within their wheelhouse. And it'll be interesting. I could see this going beyond that for, for issue. Uh, mini or um, start tackling other of those in between seasons or you know they've certainly done a lot to answer a lot of questions within like the Power Rangers universe that the TV show left out so um, they, they, they've they been able to do it it'll be interesting to see if they can do it here I'm not a personally a viewer of this show I haven't checked it out yet so let us know in the comment section again if you have you watched the expanse is this 
Are you excited for the comic series? Um, and also, what TV show would you love to see a comic series uh, done by Boom or IDW or one of those uh, publishers who do licensed comics? So I was wrong. It actually takes place between seasons four and five. And I know people that watch the show and love it. I tried to watch it. That I wasn't able to get into it. I was also kind of distracted watching it. But a lot of people say once you start getting a couple of episodes in, it grips you. So I'll, I'll definitely have to give it another shot. But we said it was going to be a slower week. We went through our picks. We gave you some mini showcase. But like we always do at the end, we also have some additional printings, right? Absolutely. Yep. And again, like the last couple of weeks, I think some of the most um, desired books on this list and, and uh, probably on a secondary market upon release will come out of these additional printings. And we definitely want to make sure you guys be on the lookout for these because, of course, the, some of these were announced last second. Um, so additional printings we've got from Marvel Comics, Avengers 38, continuing, of course, that Black Panther Moon Knight story coming with a second print. We just saw issue 36 drop a second print this week um, we've got captain marvel 23 coming with a second print we just saw 22 drop this week 23 is an issue that people are already stocking up on those first prints so i would be on the lookout for the second print i think it'll be uh in demand champions number two coming with a second print venom 29 coming with a second print we only find them when they're dead number three coming with a second print I would pay attention to that one as well. Check out what those Something's Killing the Children and Once and Future late printings are doing. And We Live, an incredibly popular Aftershock series coming with a third print to the number one issue. So there's, guys, there's our picks with those later printings. Like we say, make sure you get those orders in, whether it's at your LCS, whether it's online. If you need an yeah. online LCS, there's always blackcapecomics.com. But with that being said, guys, this is Brian and Jack with Superman's Comics. See you guys in the next video.